the diastolic function has four stages. Your first stage of diastolic function is your IVRT. This is the time from when your semilunar valves close to when your atrioventricular valves open. Your semilunar valves are your pulmonic and your aortic valve. They, they close here. And your atrioventricular valves are your mitral and your tricuspid valve, which open here. In between that, in this green area, this is the IVRT or the isovolumic relaxation time. During this time period, nothing should be going on. Semilunar valves close here, and then your atrioventricular valves open here. The second stage of diastolic function is your E wave. This is your passive filling, your early filling, and your rapid filling. They all mean the same thing. This is where you're going to get about 85% of your ventricular filling, which corresponds with this waveform over here. The third stage of diastolic function is diastasis, which is mid-diastole, and it's between your E wave and your A wave, and nothing should happen during this time. Then the fourth and final stage is atrial contraction. This is the fourth stage of diastolic function, and you can call this a number of different things. You can say it's atrial systole, atrial contraction. This occurs at end diastole or late diastole. They use those names interchangeably. And this will contribute to about 15% of the left ventricular filling. After the fourth cycle of diastole is completed, your atrioventricular valves or your tricuspid and mitral will close. And this will start your IVCT or your isovolumic contraction time. This will last or continue until your semilunar valves, which, is, which are your pulmonic and your aortic valve, open. Once they open, IVCT ends. It's normal to have grade one diastolic function as you age, because as you age, your left ventricle will fill at a slower rate. Diastolic function is probably one of the most complex subjects in echocardiography. You know, it doesn't really have to be as difficult as it sounds, but there's only a few things that you need. And we're going to go over those main things. When you're evaluating diastolic dysfunction, you're going to start in the apical four chamber view. You will place your pulse wave at the tips of your mitral valve leaflets, and you're going to evaluate the inflow here. You got your E and your A wave. What you'll do is you'll mark your E wave and your A wave. Then you'll mark your D cell time. Your D cell time is right here. This kind of measures the downslope of your E wave. And your inflow not only has an E in the A wave, it has a D wave, has a F wave, and it has a C wave. I think of it as D fac. You measure from your E wave down to your F wave. You definitely have to have this waveform. You have to put your pulse wave at the mitral valve tips. That's the first thing. The next thing that you need is TDI, tissue Doppler index. Let's see if I can. What you'll do is you will place your cursor perpendicular to the mitral valve annulus. This is the cursor here. This will be perpendicular. And your sample gate or your sample volume will be placed parallel to the mitral valve annulus. And you're going to place it about two to three millimeters inferior here. And you get these waveforms here, your TDI. Your TDI waveform should be below the baseline. And we call it the E prime and the A prime. You get your waveforms below the baseline. This is the second thing you need. You absolutely have to have TDI. Here's the locations of where you'll place the TDI on your screen. What will happen is you'll take your inflow E wave here, this velocity, and you're going to divide that by your E prime on your TDI. And that'll give you your E to E prime. Okay, it's right here. Right. Okay, 
right here. The first thing you need is your pulse wave at the mitral valve tips. Then you will need your TDI, medial and lateral E prime. Then you have to get your left atrial area and you have to get a TR jet. These are the four things ideally that you need to get. Once you have those, then you will have what you need to diagnose diastolic function. And those are, you need your E, E to E prime. This is the most important measurement that you will get in diastolic function. This determines how high your left ventricular end diastolic pressure is. Anything greater than 14 is abnormal. And this is a unitless number. To get your E to E prime, you're going to use your E wave that you got from your pulse wave at the bunch of valve tips, and you will divide it by your E prime, which is your TDI medial and lateral. And that'll give you the number. Let's say that at the mitral valve tips, you measured an E wave of 120 centimeters per second. At the medial annulus, you got a TDI of five centimeters per second. What you do is just divide five into 120 120 divided by 5 is 24. 24 is way too high. 24 represents increased or elevated left ventricular and diastolic pressures. So there's some sort of diastolic function going on. We don't know what type, but we know there is. You're going to look at your pressure half time or your D cell time. And the shorter it is, or the more steep it is, the higher the pressures. Now, you have to have a left atrial area when you're using your BSA measurement, which is, okay, BSA of milliliters per meter squared. This has to equal greater than 34, and it would be you know, these units, meters squared. The third one would be to have a TR jet greater than 2.8 meters per second. Once you have these three, you're done. You are good to go. If on your test they ask you, pick a few different options that you need to diagnose diastolic function, and let's say they have your EDE prime, they have the left atrial measurements, and they have the IVRT, and then some random number. And you're supposed to choose three. Choose IVRT with it. We don't typically measure the IVRT with diastolic function, but for the sake of your boards, you know, if they want you to choose it, then I would choose it. It's this area right here, right mm -hmm. after the T wave, because it's, it's the time from when the semilunar valves close to when the atrial ventricular valves open. This is where you would measure your IVRT. Place your caliper on the baseline of where it starts and where it ends. This is just the time from when the semilunar valves close to when the mm -hmm. atrial ventricular valves open. You just kind of, you kind of eyeball it. You can kind of see like the mitral valve inflow is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the aortic outflow there. The easiest way to diagnose grade one diastolic function is you just look at the E and the A. Are they reversed? Yes, grade one. But if you're at a facility, they will probably require you to do the TDI and you know, get the rest of your evaluation. But once you see this, you're done. You don't really have to think much more about it. In grade mm -hmm. one, your E will be smaller than your A wave, just because 
you have a longer relaxation time and then your A wave is higher because it's compensating for the blood flow that was not you know passively filling in the left ventricle so you get this high A wave but that's grade one every time your E and your A E to A ratio will be less than one in grade one and your IVRT is usually greater than 100 milliseconds your deceleration time will be greater than 240 milliseconds For the sake of your boards, you are going to worry about the E to A ratio. You are going to worry about your IVRT, and you will worry about your deceleration time. That's grade one. And this is normal for older adults, just so you know. As you age, it should look like this. If it doesn't, that possibly means that something abnormal is going on. Well, here's a good example. E in your A. E smaller than your A. Your E to A ratio is 0.8. And look, your E to E on your medial is 9.5, and your E to E on your lateral side is 8.4. Is that normal? It's actually normal because the E to E is less than 14. Do you see here on this image here, your E is taller than your A, which is fine. But look right here. Do you see that? The arrow is pointing to an L wave, and an L wave is significant for elevated left atrial pressures. That's your first sign that something abnormal is going on. If you didn't notice that your E wave is significantly taller than your A wave, the left atrial pressure is so high that you're going to see this flow in between your E and your A. This is, this is the time of diastasis. On your boards, they could give you certain criteria and your job is to diagnose it. Now grade two, when you're just looking at the waveforms, your E will be taller than your A. Your TDI will be reversed. E to A medial number will be less than one. If this is reversed and when you use continuous wave Doppler or pulse wave Doppler and it's almost I mean, it doesn't look normal here, but your E is taller than your A, so it's the opposite of this. Then you look at your numbers over here. And here it says your E to E lateral is 17, and your E to E medial is 28. That's significantly abnormal. Grade 3. Here's what grade 3 is going to look like. You're going to have that really tall E wave and the small A wave. But look here. Look at that. My E to A ratio is 2.2. I'm done. I have grade 3 diastolic function. My E to A. Mark that. And then I got my... Here's my continuous wave Doppler. I always do both. But normally, you just use your pulse wave to measure these. Get your D cell time. Then you do your TDI. Look at that. Your TDI is going to be way low. Anything less than 8 centimeters per second, is that normal? E and A prime ratio. But look how low the velocity is, E and A. This is typically what you'll see in grade 3. So this is the medial and the lateral. Then that will give you your E to E prime, which is 33. So in this patient, they have an E to E prime of 33, which means significant elevated left ventricular and diastolic pressures. With grade three, remember in grade two where you measure your E to A on the inflow and it looked like this kind of? E was taller than your A. But then on your TDI, your E to A prime was reversed. But on grade three, it won't be reversed. It'll be, your E wave will be what do you want to say? Have a faster velocity than your A wave. So this won't be reversed. If this was reversed, you would call it grade two. But since it's not reversed, you call it grade three. The lateral, you can clearly see it's not reversed.
you can do color M mode. So color M mode is just something you can do extra, but it just kind of helps support dialog function. You know, anything less than 45 centimeters per second is considered abnormal. And when you run color M mode through here, you're going to see this matches with your E wave, this matches with your A wave but not necessary to diagnose diastolic function. So here's another example of color M mode. You have your, your A labels here. And just, you're labeling your propagation waveform. You might be asked, you know, choose three things that you need for diastolic function. Once you've gotten these three things, in order to diagnose diastolic function, you have to have at least two of the three that are positive. If all three are positive, then they definitely have diastolic dysfunction. If they have two of the three, they have diastolic dysfunction. If two of the three are negative, then the diastolic function is either indeterminate or normal. If only one is positive, then it's either normal or the diastolic function is indeterminate. But like I said before, if your E to A ratio is greater than two, then they have grade three diastolic dysfunction. On your board, you might be asked which criteria is necessary to diagnose diastolic function. The first is passive filling. And you get this when you measure E wave at the mitral valve tips. Keep in mind that passive filling is also called rapid filling or early filling. The second is you'll need your E to E prime. The third will include your left atrial volume. The fourth will be your TR jet. The last one will possibly be your IVRT. If you have five options on your question, you see this one, this one, and this one, but you don't see TR jet or left atrial volume, and you see two other options that you don't need to diagnose diastolic function, like color M mode or pulmonary vein flow. You're going to choose IVRT, E to E prime, and your passive or rapid filling.